Explodes through the gap. Full of hunger, full of desire, and full of energy. Utterly unstoppable. Yo, what's up guys? Mario Toje here, Saracens and England International. I'm here in Portland, Oregon at the Under Armour Performance Centre. Let's go inside, let's have a look. So my name is Paul Winspan, I'm the Vice President of Human Performance Science and Research for our brand here at Under Armour. Right now we're in Portland, Oregon, and this is the Human Performance Center where we basically bring the athletes in to test, screen, train, and then work with our product teams to develop insights for future product. The team's main goal is to make our athletes better. Our job is to get really close to the athletes to understand what they think, feel, want, and need. So how do we make them better through training? How do we test and assess so we can show them a better pathway? And then ultimately, how can we build better product to make them better athletes? I'm here for 10 days. You know, I'm lucky to be here. So I'm very happy to be here. Looking to make some gains, train, train hard. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Three, two, one, push. Push, 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 push. What have you decided to come in? Well, when you play international rugby um, consistently, what happens is, you know, your season starts later and you end up having a shorter pre-season and a relatively short off-season. And, you know, that's just the, you know, the nature of the beast. And what that does over time is reduce the amount that you can, you can gain during pre-season. As I'm getting older, as I'm understanding my body a bit more, as I'm like continually looking at ways to improve, coming out here in my off-season, sacrificing a little bit of time in the off-season, I think is gonna pay dividends. Three, two, one, go! So the purpose of the trip from Maro is he wants to get in the best shape possible for the, the new season. We do it in two ways. We, we look at the athletes' goals and expectations of what they want. Like obviously they know themselves better than anybody and they know the expectations that they put on themselves in terms of their physical state, their mental state. And then we do a ton of assessments. We assess everything from their athletic vision, to their cognitive processing capabilities, to their musculoskeletal system. And then we go deep into their fitness parameters with strength and speed and power. And we build basically a profile so we can look at areas of opportunity, so we can fine tune what we need to work on with the athletes. For me, it's just all about looking at different ways that can get better. There's not necessarily a specific advantage. I will hopefully take off all the basics of what I need to get done as well as a few new innovative things as well. That's my friend Timmy. <laughs> so Timmy is one of my best friends. I've, I've known Timmy since he was 10, since I was 11. Went to the same secondary school pretty much since then. We've both been pretty important figures in each other's lives. <laughs> one warm-up shot. One warm-up shot. Damn, this is pressure. So my dad used to have an African food store in North London, Cricklewood. Um, so a lot of people know my dad um, in that area. Timmy's from North London as well, so him and his mum used to come to my dad's store. My dad used to give him free chin chin or free plantain crisps. <laughs> Timmy's um, he's an interesting character, <laughs> let's, let's put it like that, he's an interesting character. Of course he's not the only one, um, you've got Andy out here with you as well. Andy, what's your last name? Christy. C-A-H-R-I-S-T-I-E. McChristy. Yeah, Max Christy. Christy's Scottish half, it is. Was it always the plan to bring a team out here with you? How did you settle on Andy? How did he get the golden figure? I wanted to bring someone here um, as a training partner, um, to, you know, to push me, to challenge me. Come on, the Saracens, guys. Andy recently got capped for Scotland, so he's been in the Scotland team now for a couple campaigns. So 
his his season finished the same time as mine and he was keen and also in terms of what I want to work on in this camp his attributes quite work or quite fit nicely so he's a back row I'm a second row slash six but predominantly second row um, he's he's quicker than me and he's fitter than me uh, and they're two of the you know the markers that I want to like push so to have like a pacemaker um, he hasn't beat me in all of them though I have to say that I beat him a couple of times earlier today um, <laughs> but you know to have someone who's you know setting the you know setting the pace and pushing me a bit is, is important. This is that last dance reaction type stuff. Have you watched this before? I have, yeah. What kind of goes through your mind when you watch that? Yeah, it's, you know, it's sad, isn't it? It's, um, you know, f first of all, you know, fair play to Leicester. They were a great team. They played well all season and deserved winners. But, you know, whenever you lose a game, you don't look at that too fondly. At Saracens, you know, we have a team of, of winners. We have a team of competitive individuals, right from, you know, our CEO to the support staff. And I, I guess if you look at where we were two years ago, you know, we were in the championship. A lot of people wrote us off. A lot of people before that said that was going to be the end of Saracens, etc., etc. I guess if you look at it like that, it was a good season. But, you know, the type of team we have, the type of individuals we have in our team, you know, we want to win. You know, we're not, we're not doing this to, you know, play you know, second fiddle, we want to win. So we just, you know, we go back to the drawing board. We start, the boys already started pre-season now. And then we start building again because, you know, I have full confidence in, in the team. I have full confidence in the coaching staff. Um, and I think, you know, we'll be better for it. This camp is all about getting better. This camp is all about being curious. This camp is all about looking at ways to improve and just come back day one of pre-season in, in, in good shape and start pushing it from day one. Maro's going to benefit significantly from the 10 days. I think known Maro now as we do, even after the short period of time, he's a big thinker. The guy is very intelligent and he asks a lot of questions. And I think we're getting a feel for how we can work with him, not just around making him stronger or making him faster, but teaching him things about breathing, about creating these high performance habits around his lifestyle, the importance of sleep, the importance of good nutrition. And I know it's happening at the club, but we have a luxury that a lot of clubs don't have is we can work one on one with an athlete. It's very difficult at a club to give that personal kind of attention if you've got 20, 30, 40 guys. So we get the, the, the ability to travel the world, speak to all of these different performance experts, bring things back here and then work one-on-one -on -one with our athletes. We appreciate Thank you so much for Day one um, was predominantly movement screening. Um, they were looking at movement efficiency. We got a movement efficiency score, and that score tells you so much about your body. Off the back of that, we looked at ways we can activate better and just get the body primed to align to hopefully moving a bit more efficient. And you know, when you move more efficiently, you conserve a bit more energy. But you know, the really interesting part about being here and working with you know Mikey and Paul here is all the stuff that you, perhaps you don't necessarily get exposed to day to day. Like for you guys, we we'll probably have to open it up a bit. If we could say there's one thing we want Maro to take away from this, it's how you approach the preparation. Like how do you prepare your body to go into competition? So we're not going to teach him anything new about lifts. I mean, the guys in this club do an amazing job. I think what we're trying to do is show him about how he can take care of himself with all of the habits that he needs to create to basically create career longevity, as we call it. How can he attend to those small things that when are aggregated up make a significant difference to his health, his wellness, his fitness, and then ultimately performance? I feel like um, yeah. Professor X. Yeah. We've been working loads around like breathing. 
um, like breathing efficiency, um, different ways to help you regulate your breath and how breathing exercises can actually increase your aerobic capacity. Um, so that's been really interesting. Release and breathe in. First sign of air hunger. We've also been looking at a whole number of different like recovery tactics and recovery kind of methods that they have here, which is quite unique and I haven't experienced some of them before. And they looked at my feet, my feet are quite unique, uniquely flat, <laughs> and they, uh, they managed to make a boot that, you know, I actually don't even need to wear them in. I can get a, the boots straight from the box. My feet slide in and, you know, I've been playing in those boots for about a year and a half now. All the time there's adaptations, there's alterations to make it better. Imagine like the Batmobile but in a rugby boot. So slick, um, clean, we have a lovely MI4 logo on, on them as well. So, and yeah, I think they're beautiful boots. Beautiful boots. We're going to, wait, what's the name of the mountain? Mount Hood. So we're going to Mount Hood. So apparently there's snow up there, so it'll be interesting. Considering it's about 100 degrees at the moment, so it, when they told me it was, there was snow up there, I didn't quite believe them. But yeah, so we're going on a four hour hike up that mountain. One, two, three, let's go. Portland's a very interesting place. It's a little bit quieter than what I'm used to, a little bit quieter than London, um, but at the same time, it's a good place to come and focus. Does it work up on your mind even when you're here, being away from it? Has that impacted your decision to come here? Uh, well, the, the World Cup is obviously it's obviously on your mind. It's always it was always in the background of your mind. Part of the reason why I wanted to come this year was to also trial how this week is looking and potentially you know do it again in the off season i have uh, in the lead up to the world cup pre-season camp this is the reason why we play rugby you know you want to be a part of the biggest occasions you want to be playing for england you want to be playing in finals you want to be competing in in world cup six nations this is the reason so me personally i want to put myself in, in hopefully the best possible position to hopefully do well. And the forefront of my mind now is to get myself in the best possible shape for pre-season, start the season well with Saracens, then hopefully the Autumn Internationals thereafter. I'm not really looking too far ahead of that at this stage.